From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims, and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the Coffee Club. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support, and more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims' stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you, God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. Hey guys, Bullhorn Betty, it's nice to see you this afternoon. I know I haven't been on here very much. I've been working on a lot of court papers. I've been working on um, other stuff, obviously, with everybody knowing I'm a front row show with everything going on. It's, you know, I've been watching uh, the information coming out, um, you know, about this investigation, and it's kind of hit or miss. There's been some Secret Service uh, briefs that's come out. And so those briefs are, are, are saying some, you know, I'm not trusting them, but we're not going to get into all of that. But that's pretty much what I've been working on. I really haven't had an opportunity to come on this platform in a little while other than to complain, to have my complaints, so to speak, right, um, related to Sebastian Rogers. Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic boy that disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and has not been seen or heard from since. Um, last night, uh, we went over this case. I did, usually I try to keep my lives to like an hour. And this one was two hours long because we went over so much information. At the beginning of the live, we went through all of the stories that Katie and Chris have told up front before everything started getting hairy. This was back on March 3rd, March 4th, um, uh, March 17th, and March 18th. I used four different videos. I used um, the WSMV, uh, um, a full video. This is the um, uh, the one that they did where he had the green shirt where everybody saw the scratches and stuff on his arms. Uh, we did the very first video that he they ever uh, did, and that was on Dutch's on YouTube. And we analyzed that particular case as well. Um, or not that case, but that interview as well. And we took that and then we, we went like literally in the order in which these interviews were put in. And you can clearly see the additions of information. And it almost, it, it almost seemed as if they were being questioned by law enforcement about specifics. And as they were being questioned about specifics, they were adding that th that information in the interviews to be crystal clear, right? And you could see the um, the evolution, so to speak, of the story from what it was when she was in the street speaking to her neighbor to what it now is. And it was very, very interesting. And then we go through everything related to the light sources, the vehicle, the path of travel. Um, and then we find some other information about the coworker that came out and said that um, Chris got there at 7, you know, they started work at 7 a.m. And that he was in such a foul mood. They had, he didn't ask to be relieved that morning. Or if he was asked to re be relieved that morning, it was because he was disgruntled. 
he was a majorly disgruntled guy that morning, which kind of bodes in with the fact that something may have happened the night before, right? Why in the world would he be in such a foul mood? I mean, he told the whole world that he was already on his crane. He even explains he's got one, um, you know, the earpiece in his ear, right? And she's calling him on the other ear and he's like, uh, uh, what? You know, uh, he was a little taken back by everything, uh, allegedly. So there's a lot of information that we're still going over in the interviews. And there's a lot more interviews that I don't even, I haven't even reviewed yet. I mean, I have reviewed them, but I haven't, you know, went back to them since the first time I saw them. Like the hands video. Remember the hands video? There's some, uh, somebody sent it to me and it was a little shocker too. I need to put these all in order, in date order. And we just need to listen to key aspects of what is being said like it was so crystal <laughs> i hate using crystal clear anymore it just rolls off the tongue did you guys see my crystal clear shirt i have a crystal clear shirt and it has chris's face on it and listen to this i wasn't even thinking about it but when terry bauer socks was stalking me and uh he pulled up on me i'm out of my car recording him screaming at him with my crystal clear shirt on with chris's face like right in the middle of it and i'm screaming why are you harassing me i was pissed i couldn't believe i really couldn't believe that he had the freaking kahunas to come up, to like literally follow me the reason why i know he followed me for 30 minutes is because people went back through my videos and watched him following me and watching me so that was ultra creepy that i was so unaware of my surroundings that somebody literally could trail me for a half an hour and i have i'm be none the wiser so if he was trailing me for a half an hour why did he need to come up and take a picture of my license plate behind me, right? Tell me that wasn't for me to notice him and for him to, to let, let me know that he was there, right? That was the only reason. But I got to tell you, <laughs> it wasn't until, and I'm sitting there, you know, because, you know, I had to deal with an officer there too, right? And so I'm sitting there, an officer is, is pulling up and he's, he's talking to me about, because YouTubers called law enforcement, wasting law enforcement's resources. So that's what they told me. And I'm like, look, I'm sorry. That's what they do in every county I go into. I said, you know, this, that, and the other. And he's like, well, were you posting signs on the polls? And I'm like, yeah. And he was, me and him were having a discussion about the rules and law. And he's like, well, you know, they have to take care of their, you know, that all the way past that poll. I said, I understand that. But there's still county easements under there. And I said, county doesn't belong to, to you guys. I mean, county is public. So it, it, it is, it is a, um, you know, it, it is what it is, right? They have setbacks, there's easements, they're still required to maintain it, but county is county, right? And so we can go up to the, the, the light poles. Um, I have, and I've been told that by many people and many attorneys. So I don't, you know, there, there, there's people on these apps that are like, oh my God, she trespassed. No, I did not trespass. I didn't go past the utility poles, you know? And long story short, they were calling law enforcement on me. So I'm in the, I'm out there, you know, having a conversation with this officer, which actually told me, you know, this is Tennessee and they believe in two way and he would recommend me getting a gun. <laughs> I ain't lying. He's like, uh, he, you know, he basically told me to be careful, you know, to be careful. So just FYI, you know, law enforcement told me to be careful. Uh, yeah. And, and then shortly after that, Terry pulls up and, and takes the picture of, of the back end of my, um, car just to let me know that he was there. But I was so enraged that he did that, that I pull up and I'm like sitting there and I'm, I'm just focusing on his, his license plate, you know, and that's all I was gonna do. And it was like, no, I wanna get this son of a gun. I don't want anybody saying that it's not him, right? So I'm thinking quick and I grab my phone. I grab my phone, I go up in there and I'm like, hey. I wasn't like a hey, I was like what I did to <laughs> the Crabtree guy. <laughs> I wasn't a nice, I wasn't really nice. <laughs> It happens. It happens. That's what happens when people piss in my Cheerios, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm human. I'm human. You guys would have done the same thing, and you know it. You know it. You know it. Hey, guys, it's nice to see you. And, oh, I almost blocked you. 
I always, you know what? Because I'm always used to holding my hand on here. And I, if you hold it on too long, it gives you all these options. And then you accidentally hit something. In one of my interview, in one of the interviews, he said he would have heard him going out the window. I know he made a lot of those comments, but I don't think he was home. Because if you listen to how he speaks normally, he always, when he's talking about him and I, he always says we. I, I think it just rolls off his tongue. I think that's more, I think it's because he's so possessive. Um, because whenever he was talking about going and getting the camper, he said we. And it was just he. So, well, yeah, because it had to have been because uh, the Bower Sox were in, in Alaska. So, and we know Katie didn't go. She had to stay at the house when he went and picked up the um, camper. So he always, he talks like that. And, and people don't, you got it because they say we a lot doesn't necessarily mean they're talking about somebody else. It depends on their speech pattern. And I've, I've watched Chris very intensely on a lot of different lives, you know, when he was going on that one uh, Humpty Dumpty's channel over on YouTube. And um, he, he just, he, you could hear how he talked. And, I, and in my opinion, so don't get yourself hung up on that. And it's just because I've heard him say it so many times when he really was just referring to him. And it truly was just him. We can corroborate it was just him, you know. So it, it just might be, you know, I, I, I would think that loud and clear is more, but yeah. Oh, I want to tell you guys, don't forget, we are doing a, uh, and I, don't, I hate calling it a protest because I don't know if it, I mean, I'm going to have my bullhorn out there um, and we're going to have signs, but it's not going to be like, you know, we're, we're, we're demanding a few things because listen, they haven't brought this boy home. We don't want this getting cold. We're at a pivotal moment in the case. It's We're coming up to the six-month anniversary. We're having this protest on a six-month anniversary. And it's going to be on August 26th. And I think I'm going to do it from 9 a.m. to noon. And there's going to be cake there. And there's going to be drinks there. Cake and drinks. Whatever's left over, I always take into law enforcement to see if they would like it. You know, if, if they want to throw it away, they can throw it away. But I always find out that they do like taking it back to, you know, their their uh, lunchroom and, you know, they get to enjoy it too. We're there to honor Sebastian, but we are, at, we are there to make some demands as well, you know, which is why I have to have a catalyst of the protest. And um, one of our major demands is forensics, okay? There's been no forensics done on this. We, no probable cause. I'm gonna be listing, it, when I use my bullhorn, it's not for condemnation. It's just to make sure that the people inside hear us, okay? And it's going to be explaining what probable cause is, just in case they don't know, you know? We just wanna make sure we educate, right? We're there to make sure that they hear us because everybody knows Seth was at his job. Everybody knows he was, um, he, he has nothing to do with this and they're not clearing him. And we're not trying to get him cleared prematurely. We're trying to get him cleared because he had nothing to do with this and they have all the evidence that, that they know he had nothing to do with this. And he's got a really valuable resource, a third party, and it's called the Cold Case Foundation. And it's not because this case is cold. It's just that Chris McDonough has worked on three over 300 homicides, okay? And this is a, a critical resource that Seth really, really wants to come in to help him. And he can't do it because one of the requirements to have them involved is one of the parents have to be cleared. So he can't get this valuable resource. So, I mean, people are like, you know, being idiots on here saying, ah, da, da, da. I don't really care what they have to say about it. They don't freaking know, okay? And I, I get so, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and argue with idiots, you know, because it makes me look like an idiot. And at the end of the day, there's reasons why we need him cleared. And it has nothing to do with self-serving purposes, okay? And so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stifling, you know, that BS because it's, it's BS. It's BS. If you're hearing that from people on this platform or any other platform, it's BS, period. Um... And the other thing is, is we, we want communication between Seth and law enforcement. Not a lot, just open communication. I don't want information. You know what? 
if there's confidential information, Seth can keep his mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? He needs some confidence. He needs to be confident in law enforcement that they're doing everything they can. And he has lost his confidence. Okay? So we need, he needs our help. We're not out here for a salacious thing. We're out here for, ver for a very, very, very specific cause. And it's all out of love for Sebastian and to get this case moving. They have not brought this boy home. And everybody told us to sit down with Summer Wells. Did they not? Did they not? Right? Did they not? So when I got my foot off that the neck of, of law enforcement out there after the first year, look how this case is gone. We were there almost every single month doing searches, doing this, doing that. And people were like, let that law enforcement do their job. And where are we in that case? In Tennessee. You guys have to remember this is Tennessee. And finally, one of the things that we are also going to be doing in Tennessee is not just complaining, but we also want to make sure that the politicians in the state know that it's time to start funding their law enforcement and start putting law and order back into the state of Tennessee. Very specific goals, a very specific message, none of which is condemnation toward law enforcement or Chris and Katie. So if anybody has a problem on this platform about this, this protest that we're putting on, Oh, well, that is your problem to have. It is all your right to have that problem, but it's your problem to have. Because at the end of the day, this is why I was even called. Remember, the people that actually reached out to me first. This is exactly now I hear it because they don't they, they have their little clicks here on this this platform and all this drama that they like to create. But at the end of the day, Certain people on here that are condemning this were actually requesting me to come out and do this months ago, okay? And I refused to do it months ago because there is a clear process that I use in every single case that I cover. And so now it's time. This is not a pressure campaign of any kind. This is we need law enforcement to hear us and they're not listening. So we're going to make them listen. Now, I can tell you, if law enforcement wants to open up lines of communication with Seth, they're more than welcome to open up those lines of communication with Seth, and there will really be no need for August 26th. You know what I'm saying? But everybody has choices in this world. This is a choice I chose to make. I've do, I'm doing it because of this boy right here. He needs somebody to listen. We have no forensics done in the last place that he was done that goes totally against the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. They are not doing things right. And I don't care if these yahoos think law enforcement's the best thing. I can tell you I've covered enough of these cases with these children to know that there has been some major problems already out the gate related to this case and it's predominantly with the forensics. That bothers me and it bothers me highly and it should bother every single person that is watching and, and, and following this case. That is our number one goal is to let them hear us about this forensics because that is a critical and crucial element in any investigation whether criminal or otherwise. And it's very upsetting that people that say they care about this child would be discouraging such a thing where people can come together in harmony and advocate properly for the rights of a child that's missing. And they are so deluded that they would literally say nothing will work You've never done it. How would you know? I can tell you that a 
out of every single protest I've ever done, what the common goal that I wanted to accomplish with each and every protest, I got. And Gabby Petito, it was letting, making sure we had media out there, making sure that the, the laundries, as well as their attorney, knew exactly what information we knew we had because we were boots on the ground. We did a full investigation there. We door knocked. We talked to neighbors, everything like that. And the things that we found, we would go to our bullhorn and scream those into the house. So they, laundries, knew. They would call their attorney. Their attorney would talk to the news. The news would be answering the questions that we were saying to that house. So we were making them speak. We were the ones that got his sister out on her lawn to answer some questions when nobody else could. So with a lot of people out here that are naysayers, they can be naysayers all day long until the cows come home. But I'm good at what I do. And I understand that I disrupt a lot of people because I don't, get, I don't fall in line with the bullshit. And I'm not going to. I march to the beat of my own self. Okay? I don't ask permission. I don't fall in clicks. I don't need to be with people. I don't need people to like me. I could care, you know, I'm here for the cases. The people that follow me and love me are also here for the cases. So they don't have time for the bullshit. Get my drift? When I start seeing, uh, you know, somebody creating drama, I exit stage right. If you don't believe me, I can bet you you go ask the girls that actually reached out to me. Every last one of them is blocked because they were creating drama and I don't, I don't engage in that. I don't want any part of that. I made it clear to each and every person that wanted to work with me or wanted to help me get out there or whatever. You know, one thing I tell you, integrity and no drama is vital. And these people couldn't do it. They could not. They literally could not do it. I even think they tried and they still could not do it. That, that's a problem for me. I don't, I, nope, I distance myself very quickly. And then, of course, those people turn on you when you distance yourself. But it ain't me that's the problem. But you work with uh, dramatic people. Who do I work with? I don't work with anybody. I'm, I, I, if you haven't noticed, go out and look. The only person that I have, I have filmed with is Olivia. I've been working with Olivia for like four years. And we don't even work together all the time. We just collaborate on a few things. What are you talking about? Huh? Sebastian's house or land, if he uh, buried him on the land, he is in the Cumberland River. The Cumberland River is really, in all fairness, is a uh, prime, lo it's a prime uh, bo uh, body of water. The problem is it's a very lengthy, large body of water that stretches literally from where Chris Proudfoot started to where Chris Proudfoot ended, right? Like, um, I, I think it goes, what does it go to like to, I can't even remember where it goes. It's, it's the Cumberland River is, is big. It's big. But you say we, I say we all the time. So that's why I know that there is a language thing. You guys see me now, at least when I say we, it's, it, I'm referring to me and Delilah. <laughs> but you got to understand Bullhorn Betty, you know, that's, I'm AKA Bullhorn Betty, but Bullhorn Betty also means a lot more than that. You know, Bullhorn Betty is a channel um, I have a team. I have an amazing team. My amazing team of mods, not on here. My mods on YouTube. That is literally my team. They're they're my they're literally the fuel that fuels me. You know, um, they're just very good people that want to do great things. That want to you know help these families. Uh, Sonia, I mean Sonia makes shirts and she's always giving back. She um, she I just found out yesterday that she actually went up to. Um, Sebastian's school and asked them if she could post a you know flyer there and she 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 ended up putting up some ribbons um, I thought that was really honorable to do for Sebastian it wasn't you know signs or anything condemnation because good, good lord we don't want to hurt Chris and Katie's feelings you know they're so sensitive being from the Navy and all um, so uh, you know she put up ribbons but she does stuff like that and she, with Jennifer Santanello she made key rings she made like koozie cups, she made flyers, she made beautiful flyers. She even made some, I think, that were um, 
laminate it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like she, she's always, she's taking what she can and giving back and doing her part. I just work with a, a an amazing group of women, you know, and uh, they all, they all share and give back in their own um, special way uh, to these cases. Uh, just me, Jen, you know, there was a couple of, um, uh, missing kids that I think ended up losing their life, you know, like drowning. I can't remember what the situation was, but it didn't sound like, <clears throat> excuse me, that if I remember correctly, I could be completely off base, but it didn't sound like it was um, intentional, but a child, you know, um, uh, passed. And so they went to where I think it was like a, like a river. For whatever reason, I think the child drowned, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> and she went there and she took her son and um, she prayed with the family. You know, these are the people that I, I truly work with. These are the people I want to work with, right? I, who, who has, in all this, this, this stuff and all this nastiness going on in the world where we got potentially parents offing kids and, you know, kids offing parents, you know, and then friends murdering. I mean, I'm watching on court TV right now where this kid, uh, you know, unalived his best friend. You know what I'm saying? Unalived his best friend. Got, went out, got, hey, MAGA queen, it's nice to see you, my love. Went out and got, you know, drunk with his best friend and, and, and you know, used a, a, a piercing metal object. You know, we gotta, we got to worry about the kids on this app. You know, we got to use the word salad, right? And it's like, this is, I, I, I swear, I think it's something the kids drank. Like, I think it's something everybody's drinking. Is something wrong with our water? Maggie, can you tell me something? Is it in the water? It's got to be in the water. It's got to be in the water. So, I mean, we have, it's just, it is what it is. And we're going to sit here and we're going to advocate for him. And we're, I hope that anybody that's out in the Tennessee area that would like to come out and show support for Sebastian, you do. Uh, this is going to be like two days after or a day. I, I got to find out what day the uh, vigil is. There's going to be a vigil too. And um, it's, it's, it's going to be on private property. So uh, who comes in can be controlled. Uh, because as you know, there have been many uh, creators that have uh, attacked Seth um, and have not been very kind. And so there, I, I don't know how it's going to be, but it, it sounds like that they have a little bit more control on private property than they do on public property. So they've opted to do this on private property. And I don't know how that's going to go, but once I, I get some more details, I'll let you guys know. Um, and I don't even know where it's at. So, <laughs> but, but we're, we're going to do that. And I figured if people are in town for that, maybe they'll, they'll stay the extra couple days, you know, maybe help out. We've got some signs we can put up. We've got some searches we can do. You know, there's going to be a lot of people coming in for the vigil. Um, and then uh, we're going to have the uh, protest at um, the sheriff's office with the uh, signs and um, the cake and the drinks and stuff like that. We're just going to come together. We're going to pray over Sebastian's safe return. Um, we're going to do that because even though I feel something bad has totally happened to him, it doesn't mean there's still, we still haven't found him, which gives us all hope, you know, just because statistics tell us this and I, I follow statistics so that's why I'm doing the things that I'm doing um, just because the statistics tell us these things doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case I mean we have to look at Charlotte Senna Charlotte Senna was a what was she 12 years old 10 years old I can't remember how old she was I'm sorry I, I'm going off memory I cover so many cases but she was she disappeared from a uh, a park she was just camping out with her family she disappeared from a park she was snatched off her bike and um it was several days before they found out who it was and it was because the guy was stupid enough to go to her house and put a ransom note in the um mailbox and law enforcement was sitting on the house and physically saw him do it and so it led them to to his um he was living in this poor girl just this filthy old camper. He was a disgusting looking guy. And, uh, but she was still alive and, and hidden in the cupboard. Uh, a small little cabinet she was made to crawl in to hide from law enforcement, but she was alive. Statistics told us that she was gone, that she was not gonna make it back to her family. And she did. So even those statistics, which is where I work, 
Um, tell us one thing, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, we can always hope for that 1%. Because let's face it, Charlotte Sinna was part of that 1%. Sorry, I'm trying to get my legs stretched out. My dog's sitting on them, my puppy, and it's cramping them. There we go. So <clears throat> we want hope. We want hope. And law enforcement hasn't brought them back safely. They haven't brought them back at all. It doesn't sound like they're any closer to finding a location, uh, a new location to search. So, you know, what do you do? Uh, don't you think that doing a protest is not uh, going to create? Listen, it's our cause. Why is everybody, you guys don't have a problem with the summer of love protest and stuff like that. Why is all of a sudden protesting for a good cause now condemned when it's our constitutional right? And how is it creating drama? Why would nobody want to be fighting for this boy when every, nobody's fighting for him but his father? It just makes me wonder about why you would make that statement, Debbie. You know? It seems like if the only people that this would create drama for are the people that want the drama, right? Because how can being there um, honoring a 15-year-old boy having clear-cut demands that should have been done, like the forensics, Debbie. The forensics haven't been done. The National Center of Missing and Exploited Children specifically lists that as a critical step in the process that was missed. That's going to create drama? You guys are high. You guys got some problems on it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying if that that really creates drama for you and your world. You know, I feel like that's not focused on. Of course not. Of course not. Because whatever. I don't really care. You're not my audience. You're not my audience. You're not the one that that. You know what? I bet you'd feel different if it was your child. Is that your child in that thumbnail? I bet you if it was your child and nobody could give you answers I bet you would be at your wit's end. I bet you yourself would have had enough after six months. I find it I find it funny because you know what? I find people, this is just my opinion, I find people uh, would do one thing when they don't know what it's like, but I feel like if they were, if they had to be put in the shoes of, of a person, their, their, their opinion of what needs to be done would change. I think that um, if it was your child and nobody would help you and people were ripping down your signs and law enforcement cuts you off and told you they're not telling you a damn thing about your own child, I bet you after six months, you would be climbing walls. You would be ready for anything just to get something. And I think it's highly unfair for you to make those statements when you've never even tried. It definitely will not work if we don't try. Because if you don't do something, it's 100% guarantee it's not gonna work. But if you try and you accomplish it, you just, you just trying increases your chances of 50% of it working from 0% to 50%. You know? Delta, if you're in here to cause problems, I already heard, uh, why not protest the other? You know what? You're, you're done. I, I don't really could give two fucks. Seriously. Um, you want to add, get over? No. I just want you blocked. Um, I don't like Delta. I heard some things that Delta said about me. He can just go. He can stay off my channel. I got nothing to say to him. That's the drama right there. That's a lot of the drama. First of all, I don't take, I, I think it's very, um, Unmasculine, You know, I'm a woman that likes a man. So I just don't think that the world's creating those type of men anymore. Sorry, not sorry. Um, but I don't like wimpy guys, okay? Um, and when I hear people complaining like they're, they're women, no offense, right? I'm a little sexist. I like women being women. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I might make some people upset about that, but 
You know, I don't like my guys being girls, okay? And, and these two are whining like little girls, okay? I'm sorry, not sorry. So they can be mean to me. They can say I owe them an apology like a little bee, but uh, just ain't coming from Bullhorn Betty, babe. Anyways, um, again, I just block the drama. Um, I don't like... I don't like the drama. I don't like being brought into the drama. These people cry about themselves all the time. I don't see how talking about themselves is helping find Sebastian either. At least I'm keeping it focused to Sebastian. You know? Just saying. Just saying. Hey, guys. It's nice to see you coming in. Nice to see you coming in. We're talking. <laughs> Well, you know what? I got my, um, I'm not bossy. I'm just aggressively helpful. I got my, I'm not bossy. I'm just aggressively helpful shirt on today. I would pray for someone would make some noise if my child, uh, in hopes of to get right, right. And that's what we're doing. And like I said, it doesn't even need to go on. If, 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 if we can get some forensics, you know, if we can get some forensics done or, or scheduled forensics or they start just commu opening some type of communication with Seth, not much, just a little bit. And, you know, I don't need to know the answer. The world doesn't need to know the answer. But, you know, Seth, Seth needs, needs, you know, I think the only thing I ever heard uh, Tony and Seth discuss is that they don't want information that goes to the integrity of the investigation all they want to know is whether they're further along today than they were on February 26th. You know, that, that doesn't go to the integrity of the investigation. And yes, I think a parent deserves that answer, at least. At least, you know. So I'm going to be going down there. And not only that, this is all above board. It's not like a blitz attack to law enforcement. Like I'm going down there. I'm going to be meeting with law enforcement. I'm going to find out where we can set up. You know, they're going to they're going to willfully allow me to do this. Like they will be helping me find an area to put my stuff in. You know what I'm saying? Like, hello, folks. It's not like this is going to be burned out a freaking city or a freaking police station for the love of Christ. We're going there to eat cake and advocate for a boy. If you'd like to participate, come on out. I promise you, I won't bite. I might give you a hug and tell you God bless you. But you don't have to worry about smoke smoke or flames coming out of my, my mouth. You know? You don't have to worry about getting, getting the cooties. Okay? Now, by noon, I might stink a little bit, but th that's just because it's going to be hot. Which reminds me, bring some umbrellas if you guys don't want to, you know, or some, you know, chairs with umbrellas, right? So, I would be camping out at the police station every day looking for answers. Yeah, but it's it's unobtained. That's, that's uh, for Seth, if he lived in the community, it pro he probably, we, I mean, you know, he got kicked out of the command center, okay? I'm pretty sure if the man lived close to this police station, he'd be out there every single day, you know? But if he's going to be sitting at the police station, he'd rather be out there looking in the woods. So, you know... There's only one rule in this chat, Kimberly K, and that is don't be a Richard. You're not going to come up in my channel and disrespect me. I'm sorry, it just ain't going to happen. You got you guys got your own channels you can create. You can go on your own channels and be disrespectful. Why would you come on my channel and be disrespectful? You did it just to um, try to get yourself attention because you probably couldn't get 265 people in your chat this time of day if you saved your life. Uh, did we forget about Summer Wells? No, we did not forget about Summer Wells. As a matter of fact, we were talking about her, it, her in, earlier in this live, as a matter of fact. So, uh, and you guys you guys can replay this. I'll be putting this on my um, YouTube channel. I download them because once they're on here and we're, we close this up, you guys never see these lives again. So I download them. Um, well, uh, we did, I did get clarification. So I can't remember what her name is. I think she's, her name is Jamie from Channel 2. You remember the, the channel that kind of made everybody start speculating instead of them just actually doing any type of research, you know, the due diligence. They want to just come out here and run their mouth about how this was all just a, um, um, a PR stunt, you know, with the stuff that they found. And it was actually um, Jamie from Channel 2 
uh, provided uh, uh, voicemails talking to, uh, I think, Tom, which is her, the guy that ran the story in a, uh, incorrectly. He said, you know, and implied that they had not discussed what things that they had found. But T- Tony did discuss everything that um, they had found with Jamie and let her know at that time that, that they found, you know, that, yeah, there were several items of interest, but they turned out to be nothing. And um, so if anybody, what does Nicole Noss say? He's, his lawyer is in the chat. Who's, who's lawyers in the chat? I could give a rat's ass who's lawyers in the chat. Who's lawyers in what chat? If you're talking about some creator on here, any lawyer can kiss my ass as if they're in my chat or trying to intimidate me in any way. I, I don't get in the drama. I, hopefully that's not what you're trying to say. So, and I don't really care if whoever says that I just blocked a, a guy that happens to be an attorney. I mean, I heard some foul things he said about me. I could care less. So there is that. My heart goes out to Seth. I can't imagine uh, what that poor man is going through. I know, Lulu. It's, it really is sad. It really is sad. So um, what he's had to go through, like he's already missing his son. You know what I'm saying? He's already missing his son, and he's got all these people just being nasty to be nasty because he doesn't want to deal with their BS. You know, if you didn't come with the BS, you'd probably have had better communication with the team than you would being nasty. I'm just saying, if you haven't gotten a clue, let me give you a clue. The reason why you, you, you can't just call and talk to people is because you come with the BS. Nobody wants to deal with that, okay? When a father is, is searching for a son, they don't have time for your drama. And I know people don't like me saying it, but females, I, I, like I literally cringe when it comes to females on these platforms because they're too emotional and they'll stab you slap in the back. And I'm sorry. I keep my circle close because I got I got a beautiful ladies that work their ass off for the same reason I work my butt off for. And I can guarantee you that we would never stab each other in the back, nor would we have the, the problems on these platforms that many of these creators have because we don't want to deal with it. So it's just, you know, they can be upset and they can attack me and all. It, it doesn't matter. I'm not watching you, boo at all like i don't pay attention to your stuff it's not no disrespect but i honestly i'm working right i'm researching i've got a court hearing i'm doing by myself right that takes a, that takes a lot of times i mean for uh, you guys want to see what i'm working on just about every single page in this book i've typed okay i type by hand that's a lot of freaking papers I'm busy. I work. I don't have time to be, you know, complaining. For all the creators that want to get out of the game of um, drama and having your channel filled with drama, it's very clear. What you do, I'll tell you my secret sauce, okay? This is for all the creators out there. You deal with, you, you, if you want to keep your drama to a nil, one, when you see somebody that's full of drama, you boot them. Okay, don't don't engage with them. Don't say call them by name. Don't do any of that. Just boot them and be done with them. Let, they're gonna go pout and they're gonna cuss you a fool. And so what? Let them go about and cuss you a fool. So what? Arguing with an idiot makes you look like an idiot. Okay. Uh, a, another thing that I would suggest is going through interviews and start pulling it back from the drama and bringing it back to Sebastian. You know, going through the interviews with your people, showing them the clear differences between one um, interview to another interview. Uh, this helps it, This helps promote factual information because these interviews are words being spoken by Chris and Katie and of course Seth, right? And we also have interviews from neighbors and stuff like that. So this is all their stuff. So you can't really go wrong with it, right? Because you're listening to it and then you can commentate or be shocked or, you know, do what you do to, to promote the conversation in your chat, but keep it focused on the victim. 
the, there's a path forward for every person here on these platforms, right? But engaging in the drama only fuels your sales for so long. And think about it. You're dividing your own community. You're dividing your own true crime community on, he, over, on here uh, for clicky stuff. How is that helping any of these cases? And does it really make you feel good calling another person an idiot and B and, you know, you don't have this and da 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 Does it really make you feel good? Does it make you feel good doing it to somebody else? And does it make you feel good when it's done to you? So my suggestion would be if you really want to be taken serious, especially people like me, yeah, you, you gotta get you know get your shit together, so to speak. You know, it's not about you. It's not about your feelings. It's not about anything. It's about finding a fifteen-year-old boy, finding solutions to help finding a fifteen-year-old boy, looking at maps, asking for suggestions instead of making it all about you or having to hear yourself talk all the time. Start start talking about the case. You know, you don't have to be knowledgeable of everything, but you do have an opinion, especially, say, with the interviews. And what's beautiful about that is everybody's opinions are different. So it keeps a conversation going, but the conversation is going about Sebastian as opposed to everybody else. See how that works? So that's kind of my secret sauce. So if you want to know what my secret sauce is, that's my secret sauce. It's, it's not rocket science. It's just keeping it about the victim and victim focus. And at the end of the day, I didn't run out to the to, out to the beginning saying, "Oh my God, Chris and Katie did it!" Right? I first started out with this. I don't know. I feel a little uneasy about this. And then I heard the behavior room, and I'm like, "Well, you know, I'm going through a lot, which I was. I'm going through the court stuff. I, you know, was dealing with JLR shit. Um, you know, I was just dealing with a lot of emotional stuff." And so I thought maybe I was just off, you know, maybe I was analyzing the case off. And it does happen from time to time. You, you pick up on the wrong cues, you get the wrong stuff. And you, you and over time, boy, I always go back to the beginning. It helps adjust and reset you. So I just thought maybe I just had it off because they were saying that Jen Soto uh, knew more than she did. I didn't think she did. I'm starting to feel that now. And then they were saying that Chris and Katie were making all these things, you know, these movements and behaviors, uh, you know, they, they're, they're innocent. And it's like, wait a minute, those are everything that Chase and his team was talking about, I pointed out, but my analysis of it was just opposite of theirs. And so I'm just like, okay, well, it, it must be me, you know, it has to, yeah, you know, I must be just in a funk, you know, it happens. And um, so as it was going on, you know, I'm just like, I, I kept saying, I'm like, but you know, the behavior panel said this, you know, the behavior, and then it's like, you know what? I, I don't care at this point. There's something that's seriously wrong here. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how it went. That's kind of how it went. It's not like I came right out and started, I mean, for, for everything, Olivia interviewed Chris and Katie. Right? I mean, we were we were hook, line, and sinker into the story until things. I'm like, that doesn't make any darn sense. This doesn't. That's it was Olivia's interview, and I'm like, that was it for me. After Olivia's interview, though, when I heard it, and I heard all the changes in it from the green shirt interview, which is the one I had been studying, I'm like, that's it. Here, you know, I started I started focusing on them, but I started focusing on Chris. Because Chris was the one with all the nasty, all thank you, Jessica, was the one with all the nasty statements toward Sebastian. And he was the one that was pushing for Sebastian to go to his father's. And when we found out the custody kind of arrangements, he was going to be at his father's full time and still come to his mother's every other weekend and be there all summer. And so I was thinking, you know, as adamant as he was, he didn't want Sebastian around, um, you know, his daughter Faith. I thought that that was too much for him and he did something to him. So now through working, you know, not going straight out there with a bullhorn like many wanted me to do that now talk crap about me, right? Because I did the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Um, I looked into this and not only did I find out that I was totally wrong, 
Um, I now believe, Katie, that Chris was not at that house. He didn't come to that house until early morning on the 26th, in my opinion. I believe Katie was home alone with Chris and something ensued. She had a, a very overstimulating day for an autistic boy and somebody with Sebastian's conditions, which would have made it very difficult for him to go to sleep on a Sunday when he has to go to school on a Monday. I don't know if he lashed out or had a meltdown or did something or hurt his mom. I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't want to think that he, you know, but outbursts are outbursts. And, and, and many parents with autistic children know that. Okay. So we don't know what type of outburst he could or, or may have had. Did this trigger whatever happened to him? He had fluid on the brain, you know, could his you know, could it have been a situation where his mother shoved him and he hit his head? And, and you see what I'm saying? Because there's, he's got a lot of, a lot of, um, dis disabilities, you know, including fluid on his brain that they very, they were very concerned about his head. So, and it's why many people had a problem with the whole thud thing, because Katie knows about this problem, obviously about the head. So why didn't she go in and check on him to find out what happened? especially if he's taking sleep medication. So, oh, have you? Belinda, I'm at Bullhorn Betty. You should be able to find me. I got two channels, Bullhorn Betty and Bullhorn Betty Crime Stories. And it's two separate words. Like we don't put everything together like you guys do here on TikTok. So Bullhorn's one word, Betty's the other. Bullhorn, or excuse me, Bullhorn and Betty. <laughs> Bullhorn is one word, Betty is another word. And, uh, of course, the, the crime stories are the same way. Bullhorn, Betty, crime stories. So, in my opinion, they need to keep searching the Cumberland River. I agree. I agree. But there's, I mean, even in the, even in the community of sonar and boating and, and, and water searches, they get a little, you know, get, get bit out of shape if somebody doesn't, you know, scream their name out from the rooftop or pat them on the back. So, it's like... They're all, they're all cocky and everything. And I don't think they're going to help. You know, I really don't. Everybody keeps saying they're getting out of the case and then everybody wants to talk shit about the case. It's just, it, 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 it's, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with people. But you know, it's this, it's this new world, right, that we live in of everybody uh, that needs a trophy and stuff like that. I'm sorry, but not sorry, you know. I'm just getting over all the, the, the bitchiness, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting over it all, you know. It's like everybody's got some complaints to do. It's all it's it's all complaining and no action, right? And it just it gets it it wears on me. It wears on me because I try to find solutions when I if I'm going to complain about something, I want to find solutions. Like I'm complaining about law enforcement, so I want to make sure that while I'm out there that I'm also trying to get them some resources from the you know from their state government. And I'm going to say it loud and clear that that the state of Tennessee needs to fund their law and order. They closed down their police stations and their sheriff's office on nights and weekends. I have never heard such craziness in my life. I have never heard such craziness in my life. That is an underfunded law enforcement across the state. They need money. And, and Tennessee's politicians need to dig in their, their pocketbook and start funding their county and police across the state so we went to nat i mean nashville that's what made that's what brought it to my attention everybody's like no that's not like that well yeah it is because in nashville in the heart of nashville where a lot of crime happens you know on the strip of nashville where riley strain disappeared from they woke up saturday and they went to the police station there in nashville to report riley missing and the police station was locked. There should never be a police station. That is a safe place. Do you know our police stations stay open? Our police stations and our sheriff's department stay open 24 hours a day? They don't close. You go into a police station, you get a police officer. You go into one of our sheriff's office, you get a sheriff. It's all across the state. That's the way it is here in Florida. That's the way it should be in every single state. That's true. I live in Middle Tennessee. 
and ours closes nights and weekends. I know. The only people that call me a liar are the ones that don't live in your state. Do they realize that I practically live in your state because I'm covering true crime cases and I'm a boots on the ground, not a, a sit on my thumb type of gal? My little town in Iowa opened 24, that's exactly my point. Michaela, exactly my point. Even in your small little town, 24 seven. And we got people in, in Tennessee that, that if they really need help, think about it. If they're being chased, I can't even imagine. If they're being chased by a, a knife wielding person or a gun and they see a sheriff's de department and they're running for it thinking that they can get cover inside that building and it's locked. Locked. I've never heard of such craziness in my, I'm sorry, I just haven't. Yet my mom was police dispatcher for 39 years. Wow, that's not good. Police departments closed on weekends. Yeah. Yeah. They say they have police on call. That, that doesn't matter. That, even if they have one, police on call, the building should be open and functioning and, and, and running 24-7. We have crime 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Police departments and sheriff's departments are safe spaces. It's closed in North Carolina. Oh, I'd be pissed. Sorry. You know what? I there's been there have been times that I've had to go to a police station just for cover. You know, especially in domestic violence situations. I'm sorry. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. We need to fund the police departments across this country. You know, that's unacceptable. You guys, did, the people in Tennessee deserve better. You guys are selling your own selves short. You deserve better. You guys are still paying a crap load of taxes. Where are they going? Where are they going? You know, we would call an officer to the station when she uh, went to... Went to the restroom, huh? I have never heard of... Oh, let me go back up. <clears throat> I've never heard uh, of one ever closing. Blows... It, it, it does. It does. It does, Tracy. It blows my mind, too. But I know for a fact that Nashville... I, I remember the boys saying they went there and the doors were locked. They were trying to report. And it was at noon the next day. At noon. The police station was locked. I'm like, What? is insane something needs to change in our government yeah absolutely i think so too i think so too so but that's just kind of where i'm at you know i know people um we're going to be raising our voices and uh, loving voices in sebastian rogers honor um i know people appreciate it all over the country those that don't you guys don't have to appreciate it you don't have to watch it you don't have to engage in it you don't have to do anything to it but intentionally trying to to take people away from advocating for this boy is just wrong you know even if you don't agree it's the constitutional right of many people um, we're doing it in a very loving way i think we have a clear message to have um, i think it's the right message to have uh, it's the forensics, you know, that's the most problematic and it's getting somebody in that can help uh, Seth, you know, a, a very um, a third party that has over 300 homicides under his belt, but it's not just him. It's the entire cold case foundation that can assist and that is a huge resource that's going by the wayside and Seth really wants that and I want to help him get it, you know? So that's where I'm at. Hey, Karen, it's nice to see you, my love. Um, and I want to help. And so this is my part. And whether people like it or not, you don't have to like it. You're not putting it on. You're not expending the money. You're not driving there. You're not, you know what I'm saying? What does it bother you? <laughs> at the end of the day, especially if you're in a completely different state, what does it bother you? I promise you law enforcement is going to come out there and be very respectful to me and, and show me where I can set up and I'm pretty sure they're not going to have a problem with it. 
It's our constitutional right. It's public property. There's no other better place for it. And they'll be rewarded with cake. I think it's a win-win. Just saying. Everybody likes cake. Or should we do apple pie? <laughs> should we buy him pizza? You know? Should we buy him pizza? All right, guys. You guys rock it out with your coffee beans out. I hope you guys... Uh, what kind of cake? I don't know. What should we do? Like, maybe like half and half? You know? I don't know. Marble? It's going to be a sheet cake, you know? Maybe just yellow cake? I don't know. But you know how they, they can print, like, the face and stuff on it? I want to, like, do, like... Uh, a nice little like mural yeah the green icing yeah oh coffee we'll, we're we gonna have to have some coffee out there <laughs> I didn't even think about coffee but I, I was gonna bring a cooler with some you know drinks and stuff in it um, so anyways you know I just I, I, I wanted to honor Sebastian um, I still need to find a sign company that's going to make me like 20 signs. I haven't even looked into it yet. If you guys know of anybody, send me an email to bullhornbetty at gmail.com. Um, I want everybody to bring their own signs, but if we do have signs made and you'd like to use the, the signs we had made, you're more than welcome to. Uh, white cake, uh, dyed green. Oh, that might be an idea. I'll have to see. You know, it's whatever the... I, I'm not baking the cake, okay? I, I'm just I, I'm just saying, okay? You don't want better... <laughs> And Betty doing the cake anyways. So I'm going to leave it to the professionals, okay? I'm going to call somebody. So it's going to be whatever they have on stock, okay? I'm just saying. If they got yellow cake that they can dye green, we'll see what we can do. If they don't, you're getting whatever served. I'm just saying, don't be picky. You're not allowed to be a Richard out there. <laughs> you're not allowed to be a Richard out there either. Just saying. Take that. <laughs> Take that. Oh, I have. You guys haven't seen her in a while. I'll wake her up for you. I always wake her up for you. She doesn't have to be woke up for the for YouTube. She only has to be woke up for you guys. Say hi. Say hi. I'm still quit, quit being a wire thing. You're supposed to be good. You're supposed to be good. There she is. Oh. Oh, there she is, my baby. Yeah, she's my. Ba she's so spoiled. She's so spoiled. I wake up. That's why I'm so tired. That's why my days are off because I wake up. At um, 3.30, 3 30 in the morning, and I take her out. She hasn't made one accident, not one accident in the bed. You know? She hasn't made one little accident in the bed. And um, she goes out. She loves to go out sometime. And in, in, in Florida, in Florida, she, it's hot, and she likes to play, like eat the grass. And, and sometimes it's like 20 minutes, and I'm like, can you go pee? poop something anything you know as i'm fanning myself off and she just <laughs> yeah she is she's you guys i didn't realize how big she looks on she's just a tiny little thing she's like the size of my foot okay she's like the size of my foot but she's very energetic and she's very happy and she is oh and, and i'm making i'm making little uh, cute videos of her you should go over to my youtube channel just to go to my video section and i i do my daily delilah fix i do my daily delilah fix she is growing look at that gene simmons look at that tongue <laughs> right all right you can go down i'm done parading you she's very photogenic though she really is like when she's recording She's very lazy right now, which is concerning because that means she's going to be bouncing off the walls and making my hair stand up later. I right before I went live yesterday, I'm this this dog's like da, 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 I, I thought somebody injected the dog with espresso. I really did. Like I I thought she got I had to check my coffee cup to make sure she didn't drink it. She was bouncing off the walls and I'm like I'm about to go, you know, I'm going live in 30 minutes and I'm looking at this dog and I'm like in her condition, there's no way I'm going live, okay? She's going to be... I'm like... 
So I'm taking her for a walk and I'm trying to get her, you know, she got a little harness, right? She's, she's okay sometimes going on it. Like the very first day she did such a good job. She walked almost all the way down to the end of the road. Well, now I think she realizes that I got a leash on her and she's not really following me. And so now she doesn't want to walk with the leash on. And I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And then there, you know, her, her harness just, just fits her ever so It's still a little big for her. And there was a truck a van coming and she's trying to go do this and I'm like ah so I scoop her up and I'm like okay maybe we just need to walk back home so I figured I'd walk down um the road but the Amazon car came here and you guys know the orange cat I talk about that kind of adopted me I turned around as I'm trying to watch um um uh, Delilah I was just watching her you know the Amazon had already parked but when he was going past me the orange cat literally jumped in front of the Amazon truck. It was it, it it was not the Amazon truck's fault if he would have hit the cat. But I've been saying that that cat is going to get hit because she just jets across that road. And every time she sees me, she literally jets across that road. And I, it's gotten to such a problematic time that I actually look out my window to make sure nobody's coming before I even open my door. And she's okay. She didn't get hit, but it scared me so much I squealed, you know? And the Amazon driver, God bless the Amazon driver, I'm like, did you did you feel anything? Because she wouldn't come out from under the car, not my car, her, you know, her mommy and daddy's car. So I couldn't check her. Um, the gentleman across, he understands broken English, so I'm trying to explain to him that their cat may have been hit. I can't get her out from under the car to check her. And so he called her, and she looked fine, but the Amazon driver even turned around and came back just to make sure she was okay. So, I mean, it really was, but I tell you, it scared the crap out of me. That cat is literally here every single morning every time i open the door she's waiting there she does she loves this puppy she follows this puppy all over the yard you know she she swatted at the puppy one time but the puppy deserved to be swatted he bit her leg <laughs> he hasn't bit her leg since i just thought i'd let you know <laughs> but she she's okay but that's I, I will tell you i did have a scare uh yesterday with her because i didn't you know you just seen her bolt right in front like she literally waited until that amazon truck came up and bolted i think it startled her or something i don't know she's around vehicles she's i've never seen her bolt in front of a car before but when she's opened the uh, like i opened the door i've seen her bolt across the street for me opening the door but not when nobody was there just to jump like she literally had a death wish like she literally i, I watched it i watched the whole thing i, I squealed she literally waited until this this amazon truck was there and she literally pranced in front of it and he said all he saw was a whiz he didn't even know what it was and i'm like it was a cat i mean she she really did do that but anything anyways uh, you know the cat's okay i don't know how the cat's okay the cat didn't didn't get hit didn't get nothing just a very lucky cat just saying very lucky cat maybe i should have went and did a scratch off yesterday Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. This cat, this cat, this dog right here is sitting up like this while I while I'm moving my hands. She's sitting up like this, doing this to my arm. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm done. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll be back on the app. Um, but after Monday, I'll be more on this app. But actually, after Monday, I'll be most likely uh, making arrangements to head back up to uh, Tennessee. Um, I got to do some work up there and then we'll, uh, and I want to speak to law enforcement up there and make sure they understand what we're doing and, you know, do whatever we need to do. Once they see me and talk to me, they know, they'll know that it's, you know, we're doing it out of a place of love and not to worry about anything. Um, and so I think that's it. And if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any information, any comments, uh, any perspectives, always remember, you can always reach out to me at Bullhorn Betty. That's all one word, bullhornbetty at gmail.com. Okay, bullhornbetty at gmail.com. You guys take care. I love you. Have a great night and God bless.